waiting, waiting for the little spinny ball. There we go. All right, it says I'm officially broadcasting. Here we go. So I am switching over to oil. What colors? Do I want it warmer or cooler? Typically, I want both. <laughs> I'm going to start with ultramarine. Actually, ultramarine with a little bit of thalo in it. So ultramarine thalo. <clears throat> I call this aroba painting. <laughs> If you do it for 20 minutes and get your heart rate up 50%, you get an aerobics workout. <laughs> you know you're getting old when <laughs> you count stuff like this as exercise. <laughs> I used to, I used to, as a distance runner for many years, I used to laugh at people that, old people, you know, <laughs> who thought, Doing things like walking on a golf course was exercise. <laughs> At least I'm not so old that I can't remember my former contempt. <laughs> I do remember it. I'm just coming closer to resembling what I used to look down on. <laughs> Okay, so I've done blue. Isn't that weird? <laughs> now, let's go straight to warm. And my favorite warm, I'll go with it today, is not even cleaning my brushes. Dipping it straight in oxide red, which is a brown color, of course. <laughs> Yeah. So now I just anything that's anything that's that I want it to stay cool, stay brown, then I will avoid somewhat like this car here. I will avoid um, going over it with the oxide red. So, for instance, the sky, well, I'll let it stay, of course, a little bit blue. Now, how about this roof right here? Yeah, that's just about the right color, just right where it is right now. It's nice when that happens. Uh, another another way to describe my approach to painting is is with the all the layers of underpainting. I want to get the the painting as close to finished color as I can with within reason without going crazy and overworking everything. What about that windshield? See, here's the... Nope, that... That'll be more realistic if I do some brown on that. This car is mostly... is red, so... <clears throat> warming that up's a good idea. So basically, as you can see, I want to zoom up there at the sky. The sky is too... too stark. As you can see, basically I've done the whole canvas in blue and then in brown. Um, I, I'm sorry, yeah, I did it in blue, then in brown, and uh, I, most of the canvases, both of those, both of those colors, except for this car, and it's a little bit too much too blue. There we go. That's better. The windows. OK. 
Okay, so that's my, oh, I need some brown in this big purple blob right in the middle. All right, now I think I'm going to graduate to some smaller brushes, still using my favorite brushes in the whole world. Dan Nelson's favorite brushes. Number one, chip brushes, as I sometimes call them, cheap chip brushes. 39 cents if you buy in the right place. Second favorite brushes, any long handle brush. Uh, I'm not sure, in the, and I'm not sure it's in this order. Third favorite brush, now we're, these are cheap, relatively cheap. Now we're talking good brushes, uh, silver, uh, Grand Prix, what is it called, Grand Prix? Hang on, let me find another one here so I can read the, yeah, silver, Grand Prix, good brushes, and then finally, Winsor Newton Series 7. There you go. Just for what it's worth, which may be not anything to you. Um, now, I'm going to come in here and start doing isolated colors. For instance, this, this car right here, of course, is red. So I'm going to do some red. Being careful. Whoops, that's not, hang on. That's, <laughs> this is not part of the car down here. So I want to take that out and put, put brown, brown and blue back in down there because that's not part of the car. That was one, one time where I didn't want the, the red spilling out. A little bit more. Most of the time, I do want the red, I do want the color spilling out, but I think down there would be too, lead too much to confusion, literally. Okay, is there anything else? Well, oh yes, there are some other red things. Let's, let's go ahead and get everything that's red. There's something over the that window there. Um, the side of this, the front side of this building, it's quite a bit more red. And I've got it right now, so. Nah, that was a mistake. I don't want it that red over there. I'll undo that in just a second. So pick up a rag and lift. There we go. That's probably all right, just like that. Perfect. So up here, red building. And the red front of this building. All right. Anything else red? Oh, yeah, red tail lights on this car right here. So definitely a red and then red reflection in the row, in the road. I think that's all the red. I'm going to clean these brushes real quickly. I'm using Gamsol there. I admire people that can paint a whole painting and not ever rinse out their brushes. Keep thinking if I ever grow up and develop good habit, I'll do that. But at the moment, I can't do that. I, I clean my brushes. Okay, I'm going to go to yellow now. And I'm picking up uh, Indian yellow. Very intense yellow. And anything that I want, yellower. That's all. Anything at all that I want it to be yellower than it is at the moment. These, these pillars in front of that building. Um, this area, it's in front of that building. Oh, that's right. And then there's, if, if this building is yellow, then there's yellow reflection on the road down here. All right, now, anything I want green? Sure is. I need some, I need some green in here. Green is a very dangerous color, therefore, Almost always a good idea when you're doing green to work in transparent or translucent. Opaque green can get you in trouble faster than you can say the opaque green. <laughs> so be very cautious about using green. There's this big purple blob in the middle of the painting um, is a bit much. But if I go over it with green, you can see it's the darkest part of this photograph it's right there but it's it's supposed to be dark green not dark purple but dark 
Purple is an excellent underpainting color for, for green. Now I'm going to do something. Down here I did purple in the acrylic stage. Never did any purple up there. I'm going to go ahead and do some purple up there right now um, to represent or to, to go under greenery, under foliage, under tree leaves up there. Sort of to equal this purple down here or to, to fulfill the same function as what I had going on down there. Now I'm going to add some green to that purple. Just make sure it's, it's the right, right color. Okay. Now back to purple. I don't have to clean my brush. Uh, purple, I'm, I'm still, as I hope you're catching on, I am operating in the realm of transparent color. And for those of you who work in opaque color, if you were to make the switch to transparent, you would find there's several rules. For instance, an opaque color, the three primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. In transparent color, the three primary colors are yellow, not red, but magenta, and not blue, but cyan, or phthalo blue is close enough. And uh, in, the, in the world of um, transparent color, purple is the darkest color available to us. So I'm using purple right now, not so much because I want purple-ish color, although I like it, it's fine. It, it's better than a dull color, but I'm using purple because it's dark. So right now I'm just doing darkness. And um, again, purple is, is dark, is the darkest color, so to speak the darkest color that we have. So anything that I want dark, like these, these wheels, the shadow under this car, okay? But it's, it, everything I'm doing is transparent. That's very important because it's Im important to understand that I'm not obliterating uh, information. I'm not covering up or losing losing information yeah some purple in these windows here dark windows so i just wiped out some of the yellow i put on there earlier but that's all right that's that's the right way to do it um shadow on this ground the dirt just the ground bare ground up there raise this up a little bit and let's get this street down here in the foreground let's get this street the right color this needs to be quite a bit darker than it is at the moment back of this car darker Fun, fun, fun. If this looks like fun, you're getting the right impression. <laughs> if it looks like I'm having fun, you are, you are tuned in. This is so much fun. It really is. Now, I get back, back to green. I forgot when I was doing green about these bushes, shrubbery down here. So just adding that right now. Any other colors? I did red, yellow, blue, and then purple, green. Any orange? Nope, nope, we're good enough. All right, then the next thing, then we'll take a little break. Next thing is a uh, cotton rag, preferably. If you have a cotton rag, whoops, I'm supposed to have some scissors. Okay, will you hang on just a second? I'm gonna run into the other room and get a pair of scissors. I want to cut this nice, nice. <laughs> this is what an artist calls a nice cotton, nice rag. <laughs> uh, it's not stiff with paint. That's why it's nice. <laughs> uh, it will be soon enough. All right.
And that's so that I can use two hands because I don't want to get slide into one-handed painting. Okay, it's, it's up high, so let me start. So now, all the colors are pretty much where I want them. This is so fun. I hope it seems like fun. Now I can come in here and just start lifting out stuff that I want to be lighter value. And the fact that I'm using such a blunt instrument is really, really important. Again, almost everything I do is things that I've learned to keep me from painting tight and being a control freak. Right. Tail lights and tail light reflection, tail light reflection. There we go. See, it's already beginning to take on the magic of this, this photograph. You can, if you need to, you can stick your finger through like this for more precise, more precise uh, erasing work. Most of the time, though, you don't need to. Okay, and then if that's, oh, you know what? I completely missed a, nah, it's all right. The lantern's around the side. Then uh, reflection of those lights down here. Yahoo. I'm going to lift some blue off this building. Yeah, just a little bit of lighter stuff right there. Headlight here. Headlight and reflection of headlight. Isn't that fun? Just like magic. It just the, the image just begins to emerge. I mean, if, if this were my style, if this were the Dan Nelson style, honestly, I hope you can see, I could actually stop right here and call it a finished painting, couldn't I? And maybe someday in the future, this will be my style. Maybe I'll realize, you know what? I kept going. I didn't need to do all that stuff. I could have quit right where I was. There certainly have been many paintings where I've, I've gone too far and I should have quit <laughs> one or two stages, layers sooner than I did. Oh, hard lesson. Hope I don't do that again. Chances are I will, but I'm still hoping. Light is a little bit too light, isn't it? So let's darken that up a little bit. Ah, this windshield now. Oh, it's the perfect color, but it's just a little bit too dark. So let's lighten that whole windshield. So again, I'm looking at my reference. I'm looking at my photograph all the time. I don't mean all the time, you know what I mean by that. Continually, continually looking back at that photograph. Okay, now down some more. I like to say, you, you, in my world of painting, and what I call this, the world of quote unquote real painting, <laughs> uh, very arrogant, snobby statement, forgive me, I know. Um, but I'm going to say it anyway. The world of real painting, like Rembrandt, Franz Hals, Frederick Remington, or what David LaFell calls abstract realism. In the world of abstract realism, you don't get credit for wrestling with your painting and beating it into submission by drawing, by sticking out your tongue and drawing. You get credit, <coughs> so to speak, quote unquote credit, for the, Im the image emerging uh, accidentally, <laughs> almost as if by magic. And I, forgive me, but I sort of think what's happening right now is 
pretty good, pretty good example of that. This image is emerging uh, not out of white knuckle tongue painting or tongue drawing. It's emerging out of process. And in my mind, that's good painting. The image emerges almost as if by magic out of, out of process. And um, another way to describe what I, again, what I, what I think is good painting is um, every layer of the, every layer, every phase of the painting process, every phase or layer of the painting process by itself is very abstract. Every layer is abstract. But the accumulated, the accumulation effect of all those layers is surprising realism, surprising degree of realism. And I would point to the painting as it is right now and say, that's what I'm talking about. Every layer has been abstract. But you see car, car, you see buildings, every, everything, reflection in the wet, wet pavement, so on and so on and so forth. Okay, now I am down to last three layers. Again, want to be careful not to overdo it. So the last three layers are number one, the fuzz layer. And I don't want to do too much because the fuzz layer tends to cover up a lot of square inches, which is what help, makes me lose some of this beautiful energy, abstract energy. So I want to be careful not do too much fuzz. Fuzz, then pencil, and then if there's any dark areas that need darkening, I'll do that after the pencil, and then the final edit layer. So four layers, fuzz, pencil, dark, and final edit. And the final edit is the slowest and the most careful. But even that layer all by itself won't cover more than 10% of this canvas. No more than this much of the canvas will get opaque paint on it. All right, a little break here. I'm having fun, hope you are. It's magic when the painting happens by magic instead of by force, if you will. Okay. Little break, be back in a few minutes. Thanks. Putting out some new titanium white alkyd, fast dry titanium white. So if I do any impasto, impasto on the canvas, it won't take weeks to dry. All right. The fuzz layer. Local color, correcting any color shifts that need to happen. Um, things that glow, very soft edges, oh, translucent, soft edge, local color. My fuzz layer, translucent, let that, let that sink in. Translucent, local color, and um, soft edges. I just had to crimp that ferrule right there because it was... I'm going to start with, there's a few lights. I'm going to start with uh, some of the lights in this. There are these lights on the building, tail lights, headlights, and street light. Those are the, the main ones. And I certainly want to make sure that those are all glowing. So I'm creating here a warm, warm white. A very, very, very pale yellow, if you will. My favorite color for doing that normally is yellow ochre to create a warm white. Okay. Let's go up here. Do you see the mess I'm making? That's crazy, right? That is. Let's go up here to a street light. Okay, done. Now, oh yeah, there's a, there's a light under here, underneath this porch here, under the portico, under the Greek <laughs> portico. Sit down now for a minute. Let's do headlights right here. I want this to be yellower for this, so 
want a little bit more of an aura, a little more of an aura around these headlights. In other words, more, more yellow, bigger. Okay, and, and I hope you're paying attention here. When I say soft edges, <laughs> I mean soft edges. Like that, my, my glow from that headlight extends a good two inches out and glow around the, a little bit more yellow, glow around the reflection down here. If you overdo anything, you can always just take your finger. And again, I'm not, don't have any toxic colors in my, on my palette. I think I'm gonna add more yellow to, I'm getting a lot of noise. Are you guys getting a lot of noise on your audio here? Is it just me? I hope it's just my monitor. Let me know, if please, somebody, if you're getting a lot of noise here. Okay, taillights. Wait, no, I wanna do red. I wanna do red glow around those. A bit more up here, here, and then the reflection from those, from those lights. Okay, let's switch over now to red so I can do the glow around these tail lights. Good, thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. Okay, good. I've got a new system. It's this. I'm enjoying it very much because it helps me hear I get my own voice, but it's turned down. I get my own voice about every about two seconds late, but it's a huge help because it lets me know if if we stop broadcasting. And eventually, what we're, I'm going to people are going to be talking to me verbally when we broadcast on some platforms, and so that'll be a big help. Anyway, all right. So there's glow around the red. I'll, I'll clean those brushes later. Let's graduate to now some atmospheric perspective. The glow layer, especially when you're doing a, a traditional landscape that has distance in it. This, is, this, is, does, this hardly qualifies because it's a very short, short field, if you will. It doesn't go very far, but still. Um, the glow layer is very helpful for achieving it's kind of like atmospheric perspective in a bottle. <laughs> atmospheric perspective in a layer, in one layer, in the glow layer. So there's now blue in front of those trees, much more realistic. Blue along the top of this. Of course, and as you can see here, sometimes one glow runs into another. So the blue that I'm doing up here is interfering with the white I did around that light, but it's, it's a good interference. It's not, it's not bad at all. I usually say one of the rationale behind the glow layer, I've been doing it now two and a half years, is it's easy for a painting to have too many hard edges. Very easy. That, I think that, again, for me and for most of you, that is your, one of your default Mistakes, myself included, myself included, is too many hard edges. So um, I've, that's why I'm sticking so far, this, this, for the last two and a half years, this glow layer has become helpful to me because it's, it's a very intentional um, soft edges. I'm even doing some blue on this car here. I'm going to do some of that same blue on this windshield. Ah, I'm going to go back to some, I need to get some bigger brushes. I want to do some, I want to do some blue atmospheric um, perspective, perspective, atmospheric color glow down here in the foreground. 
way down here on the asphalt. This is too, too dark. Need some blue stuff in here and need some, need some soft edges in there. Yahoo. I think one of the ways that you can tell that you're painting, everybody's different, right? Some of you might, you might be able to derive some benefit, perhaps, perhaps from watching me paint, but you can't paint like me any more than I can paint like you. We're all absolutely unique. Welcome to the human race. But I think one of the ways that you can tell that you've, that you've arrived at a painting technique that is appropriate for you is that you enjoy every single phase, every stage, every layer. And that certainly describes me. I, I get a kick out of every single stage of the painting process. That's really fun. Like I'm, this, I'm just enjoying the heck out of this. Maybe you can tell, I hope you can, because I, I am. <laughs> All right, I, th I think that's enough blue. Now I'm going to go to brown. I need just a little bit of local color correction on this wall, this building back here. Now, oh, hang on a second, am, am I covering up too much? Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, but close. <laughs> Close, I'm in the danger zone. Woo, 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 danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> All the kids are going, what's he talking about? Why does he say danger, Will Robinson? <laughs> right? <laughs> going back to the 60s on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, um, Netflix, I, my wife and I watched a little bit. Netflix has come out with a new Lost in Space. It's pretty, pretty charming especially for those of us who um, remember the original. Okay, so I've got some brown. Let's make it a little, a little redder than I made it too red. So let's add some more brown to that. Okay, and, and things, things that I want browner. Huh. Again, soft edge, soft edge, soft, soft, soft edge. I want to diminish this big blue stripe, this, uh, initial abstract mark. I, want to, I don't want to erase it. I don't want to obliterate it, but I want to push it back just a little bit. Same thing right here. Just push it back a little bit. And some brown, this building back here is supposed to be brown and it's very blue at the moment. So let's fix that. Okay, almost finished with the fuzz layer. And the question, one question I have is, have I done too much? I don't think I have, I don't think I have. <laughs> but I hesitate to say that too quickly. So now, I want to do a little bit more on these tail lights. I've already did red glow. Now I want to do white glow on top of that. Actually, warm, and I want it warmer than that. Kind of like a, a yellow orange glow. There we go. And also, of course, on the reflection. And then a lighter version of that same thing way over here on these headlights, on this headlight. All right, I believe my fuzz layer is done. And if I've done too much, of course, I can come in here anywhere. Everything's wet. This is the beauty of oils. Everything's wet. 
and I can lift stuff off. I do want, I want to lighten the, these road markings a little bit. Anything else? I don't think so. And I misspoke a few minutes ago, by the way. I said I had four layers and it was five, but now I have four layers to go, I believe. Let's see. Pencil is next. I'm going to take a quick break here because I have a bunch of brushes I need to clean and sharpen pencils. Pencil, then dark details. Just if there's anywhere in the painting that needs to be darker, not so much for realism's sake, but for instance, I've lost the bottom of this telephone pole. I want to make that dark. I want a little bit of dark around these wheels, even though I'm not going to go as necessarily as dark as the photograph. Uh, pencil, dark, final edit layer. And here's the funny part. In the last couple of months, I've come up with a new, that light is awfully bright. I've come up with a new post edit. <laughs> there we go. I've got a name for it now. Post edit, which is broken color. And I, brought, I did a broadcast uh, uh, last night where I did broken color. So I've, I've added a layer, I've added a stage to my painting repertoire and I call it broken color. Now I'm going to call it post edit because it's, I've been calling it final edit. It's not final anymore. So I can call it post final edit. All right. So real short break here. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks guys for watching. I look forward to catching up with your comments and chats. Uh, any that I'm missing when I'm done with this. Thanks so much. Hello, Oscar. Thank you for saying nice. Now, I'm just doing a little bit more erasing now that you're back. Those are the stripes in the road. We're a little bit too dark. Now, it's time for pencils. And uh, good time to... Whoops. <laughs> I, I just saw something else I want lighter. This right here, the chrome, a little bit of chrome on that car. There we go. All right. So I say this a lot. I can repeat it for newcomers. Why do I use pencils? It's a purely abstract consideration. Simply because I like the way it looks. I don't use the pencil, especially at this stage. I don't need to draw any. There we go. I lost you for a second there. Let's see if we catch back up. All right. I don't need to draw anything. Everything is drawn accurately enough. But I like the interplay between scratchy pencil and smushy paint. I started this, this particular idiosyncrasy um, about three years ago. I can't remember exactly. I think it was three years. It was the summer of 2015, I believe. For me, it was the summer, the summer of abstract painting. I did over 200 abstract paintings. I think over 250, maybe 300 in that one in one summer in three months. I had it was great fun, and I love it. I still I still enjoy abstract painting, and. In the free atmosphere of doing non-objective abstract painting, I began using these pencils that I'd had knocking around my studio for who knows how long. And I found that I enjoyed the, the interplay between scratchy pencil and smooshy paint. I enjoyed it so much that when I came back then to my, my traditional painting, I said, wow, why don't I just continue to use pencil? And I did. And I've loved, enjoyed it ever since. I wasn't sure if it was a passing fancy, if it was something, just a phase I was going through, but I don't think so. And here's one of the things that really encouraged me in that regard. There have been, I think, three occasions since that time that I have run into other artists. Uh, one was here in Raleigh at the Little Art Gallery. One was in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I forget where the third one was, but um, I was looking at someone's artwork, and they too had used pencils, some kind of pencil. Roughly, they looked like this kind of pencil, black, and uh, especially in the Scottsdale, Arizona case, um, which some of you know that's a real hotbed for 
artists. And uh, this one artist, I have no idea which gallery we're in, didn't matter, it's not a point, that wasn't the point what gallery it was in. Um, there was an artist there who was a woman, woman's name. Some of her paintings she used pencils in and some of them she didn't. And I flipped through her bin and looked at her display on the wall. And to me, so I could be more objective because it wasn't my painting, it was somebody else's. And to me, the, the paintings in which she used the pencils were decidedly more interesting than the ones that she didn't. So that encouraged me greatly. That helped me think, see that, okay, it's not just me. I really do like um, this, this combination. So that encouraged me. So there we go. And I would like you to pay some attention to the, the manner in which I'm drawing here. I hope you get the impression that I'm, paint, that I'm drawing very, very loosely, right? Does it look like I'm being loose? I, I, would, I would hope so. I hope you're savvy enough to pick up on that. Well, he ain't, he's not drawing carefully at all. <laughs> that would be a proper, that would be a proper impulse. Okay, just about done here. Just about, so done, it's not taking long. Another thing that I've started doing lately is this, after all my draw, after I'm done drawing, just take the two pencils and do completely, kind of like the very first step of the painting process was abstract. So the very last step of the pencil is again, purely abstract lines, just slash marks. Any of them I don't like, I can just rub them out just like this, but most of them I like. Okay, so now I'm down to three more layers to go. Two little ones and one big one. The first little quick one is dark details. So is there any part of this painting that needs, that it needs to be darker? And I need to be careful at this point because um, I don't want to get literal and start copying this simply because it's there. But there may be bits and pieces. First of all, I'll make sure that there's a, enough, at least number nine, but if not, if not number tens, I want to make sure there's at least sufficient number nines and a few tens. Do you, do you understand that language? Scale of zero to ten. Ten is, one, zero is white, white, white. Ten is black, black, black. You don't have to have a ten, but a nine is so close to black. It's like, it's like looking at a dark navy blue coat in the evening. It looks black. That's black enough, okay? And there are several places. First of all, this, this car down here, I just, I missed. I should have done this in the acrylic stage and I missed it. So let's catch that right now. That's, that's black. This is black right here. And yes, I am going to darken, oh, and the bottom, sorry, the undercarriage of this car. It's a red car, but you know, almost all cars these days, they, they the very undercarriage is black. And I want these wheels to be a little blacker, just a little. I don't want to obliterate all this color, but I want it a little darker than it is. I'm going to soften that edge right there. Let's do these wheels around the corner here. Okay, see, that's nicer. Just what just happened to that car is it pops a little bit. <sighs> Same thing now, um, similar on this car little bit of black. Being careful. I sounded like Bob Ross right there, didn't I? <laughs> little bit of black. Little friendly little black. Undercarriage black. There we go. Shadow black er. See the in the photograph, the shadow of this car is pitch black. That's what I mean by I don't want to get caught I don't want to get caught up in copying. Just because it's black in the photograph doesn't mean, and that's because it's, that's the inadequacy, if you will, of photography. If you or I were there with our naked eye looking at this car, we could easily see shapes and form and color and values in the shadow. But the camera is, the camera is not that sensitive. So you don't want to copy the bad side of photography. 
right? Just copy the good parts. <laughs> Don't imitate. So I'm not going to go black here, but I do want it slightly darker. That's better. Then a little bit, it's a little bit of black. Real dark, I shouldn't say black, real dark right there. Dark in that rearview mirror. All right, cars are done. Um, I don't think I need to do anything down here. The road is okay. It could be darker. Hmm, hang on just a second, just a second. Hmm, this is a late, late, late breaking. I'm going to try some darkening the road a little bit, so hang up. I just, no sooner do I say it's dark enough than I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm not sure. I want that a little bit warmer. Oh, the, the, the way I'm creating my black, so to speak, here is uh, ultramarine and oxide red. Ultramarine blue and oxide red. So blue and brown. So you can, that's, that's better. You can control very easily the temperature of the gray. So it's actually a very dark gray. And I add enough liquid to it so it's not, so it's not too dark. Does that make sense? It's like, like watercolor, except instead of water, it's my medium that I'm using is liquid. And, and again, important to notice that this is so not opaque. This is right now, what I'm doing right now is transparent. So even the very first abstract, see this? I don't know if you can see this yellow. This red swoosh right here, uh, yellow here. Most of my, most of my underpainting down here, my most of my initial abstract down here, was warm colors because I knew this was going to be cool, and in fact it is cool. So I've got opposite yellow and red peeking through. So far, I think I'm doing better on this painting than on yesterday's because I'm allowing more of the initial energy. I'll use that word. I'm allowing more of the, more of the initial energy to continue to show through. Okay, I think I'm done with that. So I just darkened the street and I think I like that makes the, the light areas up here. You can't have light in a painting without having equal and opposite dark. In other words, if you were to hang a completely white canvas, <laughs> still in the wrapper, on the wall, people would not get the feeling that it was like, oh, that's so bright, that's so... No, they'd say, that's stupid, it's a white canvas. So in order for something to look in your painting to look like it's bright, like this headlight, you have to have sufficient dark around it. That's what makes things look light, is the com commensurate darkness. So I just darkened that street, which will, make, which will make these lights pop out more. So I'm happy with that. Let's go back then to my smaller brushes. And again, I don't want to paint too much, but I think up here between these pillars, I can, it would help having some dark. What about up here? Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, then that's too cool, so I add some brown to it. It's okay, I don't have to fix it, but I don't want to continue. I don't have any people in this painting. I'm going to put one person, a little bit late, but it, but I actually can do it in, the, in this dark layer. There, I'm going to put one person there. Now, one very specific thing I do want to do, and that is these windows here and again this is, i am being influenced by the photograph here in the photograph we can see these window panes and they are dark and i i looked at the photograph and said yeah that's a nice detail that's a nice addition to the scene there all done and then these steel bent metal pipes that hold conduits that hold these these lights up 
they, they, that's just a little detail that will aid in the, in the realism of the, of the scene. Because I want people to know those are, you know, real traditional folksy <laughs> kinds of uh, lights on the front of a building. And it got lost down here. So there. Oh, and it comes all the way down here, right? Yep, 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 yep. There. So now we've got that pole back. And then this, this stuff is great for doing um, branches, limbs. I had limbs painted in here earlier, but they got, they got lost. Now they're back. That looks good. Same thing up here. One, when I, when, when I teach how to paint trees, one of the things I'm going to teach you is that you paint, you render trees in layers, layers and layers and layers. You don't do it all at once, unless you want to paint a bad tree. <laughs> I'm assuming you don't. <laughs> okay, so again, we have branches up there now. It looks a lot more like a tree. Anything else? There's a truck way back here with dark windows, maybe. Shadow on this mirror. All right, I think I'm done. I, I, if I need to, I can come back. I, of course, I can cheat. Oh, wait, no, there's a shadow here I want to get. And there's one part of this building that really, the, ang the, the architecture really overhangs a lot, creates a deep shadow right there. There we go. All right, if I need to, I can come back and cheat and add more dark when I get into the finished, the last stage, the last phase of the painting process. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take another short break because when I come back, I'm going to launch into the final edit layer. Everything I've done up to this point has been fast. When I come to final edit, the, the pace changes significantly. You say, whoa, slow down. And it's not, it, I'm not going to paint very much like this, tongue painting. None of that, I hope. But I, I'm going to slow down quite a bit because I'll have to make very careful decisions and very precise marks. Okay. <laughs> I just saw something I want to fix before. Let's, let's do this before we go. I'm going to um, give me myself more red aura around these taillights. And then more, more red in the reflection. All right, that's good enough. All right, end of this broadcast. We're going to come back. It's 499 C. Number 500, just around the corner. Woohoo! Thanks, folks. Be back.